Quickly, they stop being lovers. <laughs> Here, oh, 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 thought any more about what I asked you? I've given it all the thought I'm going to. And the answer is still no. One would think in these days of automation, jet planes, free love, swinging singles, group sex, that a man like Arthur Randall would be joyful at his 20th wedding anniversary, that he and his bride should have survived 20 years of trials and high points should be a source of pride. His friends seem happy enough to be part of the celebration. One wonders what the conversation was, why the emphatic no, what the unrest is behind Arthur's smile and where it will lead to. Over the years, one thing Arthur has always been able to do is take good care of business despite outside pressures. However, his pressures seem to be inside. He looked capable of killing. But Arthur is a gentle person. Oh, yes, yes. But then the secret pressures that lurk inside of people can for a fleeting moment change their entire personality. Arthur is a man of integrity, gentle and basically kind, but desperate. Ellen, you're going to have to come to some kind of a decision. There's nothing I have to do. Lady, I'll be damned if I know why you want to go on this way. Everything is dead. It has been for years. Ellen, you'd have more than enough money. You could travel. You could do anything you wanted to do. I have more than enough money now. I am free to travel. I can do anything I want. And I have the respectability of marriage. I will not allow you to take that away from me. It's all right. Because I'm going to fix it. It all works. 
था The doctor and the... At least I think that's what the cause is. I probably should have gone somebody I don't know about. Nonsense. Arthur, I don't think you're capable of killing yourself. A week ago, I would have agreed with it. Have you expressed to her how you feel? I told her I wanted the divorce. Now, that's not what I meant, and you know that. I mean, how long is it since you two sat down together and had an honest conversation? A year. Look, I want you to take Ellen away for a few days. Florida, West Coast, anywhere. Then sit her down and have a good old heart-to-heart. -heart. And maybe the two of you can stoke up some of those old fires. Well, I couldn't get away to Florida this time of the year, John. There's always a house up at the lake. Big idea. I'll tell you the truth, John. I, I wouldn't know how to ask her. I don't know how to... We don't even communicate anymore. Let me talk to her. I'll talk to Adam. Would you, John? Thank you. Well, thank God. It's about time you came to your senses. Now maybe we can get a few things accomplished. Your moping around here has been a terrible strain on me. I know, darling. Well, if we get packed tonight, we can start first thing in the morning. Oh, tell Mary to pack. And send her on ahead. I have no intention of being stuck up there and having to do all the work. Darling, I think John wanted us to be alone together as much as possible. Well, John doesn't have to do the cooking and the cleaning and the dishes. So do as I say. And tell her not to forget to pack my facial creams this time. I don't like the drive up here. I never have. And you know that. Well, I just We thought... should have flown. Sitting in a car for six hours is too long. Well, I just thought it would give us more time together that we could talk and share. Share what? The discomfort of the ride? Well, I had hoped that you wouldn't be uncomfortable, that we could uh, talk about our lives together, our future. Don't be a child. We're not teenagers. We're living in our future now. Still up to this at all. Still, you're making an effort. I'll do my part. I appreciate that, Dan.
Normally I don't pry into anything pertaining to business. But there is a matter that needs taken care of. What matter needs taken care of, dear? Your secretary. My secretary? You can get rid of her when we get back to the city. Well, she's an excellent secretary. I have no intention of firing her. Despite your personal opinion, Arthur, I'm not a fool. I've known what's been going on between you two for months. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. I'm quoting common knowledge. Yeah. I see you've gotten to my partner, Tony. He's much more of a man than you are. He's never allowed himself to become involved in such childishness. My relationship with Cynthia is not childish. Don't you defend yourself and not with that trump! <laughs> shirt was in the middle. You know, they've never found a bottom of this lake out in the center. I guess that makes finding your wife impossible. trouble. I'm positive. Well, darling, the day before yesterday, I was consulting an eminent psychiatrist. I was depressed enough to commit suicide. The whole trip was his idea. You said you'd fix it. Mm-hmm. I'll fix something else for you, too. I got a surprise for you. Okay.
alive. Ellen, where are you? Ellen! What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing, but I think you flipped your lid. Call me tomorrow when you settle down. She's alive.
Arthur's case is not unusual. Many people are driven to desperation by what are just day-to-day -day frustrations to others. Oh, yes, his solution was harsh. But what part did destiny play? Why was the Randall's getaway cabin on the shore of a bottomless lake? What is in the lake? So, until we meet again, this is Anthony Quayle reminding you that there is a touch of evil in all of us. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Thank you.